The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus said, To what then shall I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to your Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I remember reading a comic strip. A young boy comes to his father with his report card from school and he seemed to have failed in all his subjects. The father is angry. The son asks, Dad, I'm sorry, I failed. He said, no, I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with your school. So I don't want to sign your report card. Let's go back to school. And he goes back to school and to his principal and says, my son has failed in all these exams. So the principal says, yes, he's not doing well. He said, no, that's not my concern. I paid the fees for my son, hoping that he will study, but looks like he's not been taught anything. Now, either he passes in all the exams, or I want a refund on the fees that I have paid. The principal was stunned. Dear friends, in life, we all have expectations, whether be it business or relationship we always have expectations like you you work you have certain expectation from your employer and the employer has certain expectations from your from their employees well you buy something you have certain expectation from the device or the goods that you buy well even in relationship as a wife you have certain expectations about your husband how he would be and what he would do what he would not do, and same would apply for a husband who, ma who has or marries a wife. Children towards parents and parents towards children. But disappointments can happen at two levels. One, when we fail to live up to those expectations, when things don't measure up to that expectation. But there's another reason when we, we can be disappointed. When we have irrational or unreasonable expectation towards someone else or something else. Today, Jesus is holding a mirror towards the people that he's talking to, towards his own, the people of Israel. He's telling them, I can see that you are disappointed with me. That you are like children where you sit at the marketplace, children play this game wherein they play the musical instruments and expect their companions to dance according to the musical instruments. And they, have, they play this game of a funeral service wherein they play the dirge and they are expected to mourn. But children are complain complaining to one another that we are playing the music but you don't dance, we are play playing the dirge but you are not acting to be pretending to be sad. And Jesus says, well, you too have certain expectations from me, but you seem to be sad. You seem to be complaining that I'm not measuring up to your expectations. And Jesus shows that how irrational are their expectations. And he gives example of John the Baptist and about himself. He said, John the Baptist came as austere as he could be as a prophet, and yet you did not believe him. And I come as a friend of all, as a man 
who preaches and does good, who's with you in your celebrations, but you call me a drunkard, a glutton, and a friend of tax collectors because I'm trying to bring them back to God. The problem that Jesus is pointing here is that they had wrong expectations from Jesus. Now, the people of Israel had this great expectation of the Messiah who was to come, the promised Messiah. For the Pharisees and the church leaders, it was a Messiah, a political Messiah, who would come and deliver the people of Israel from the powers of the Romans, politically free them. But Jesus turned out to be someone else for them. Jesus came to bring in freedom from something bigger than just worldly power. Jesus came to bring freedom from sin and slavery to evil. Jesus was not offering just freedom here on earth, but he came to bring in freedom for eternity, a promise of eternal life. And that's why his teachings went over their head, or at least they were not ready for it. And that's why Jesus was disappointed in a way in them, trying to get them to say, it's not about what you expect from me, but I'm asking you, to open your hearts to what is God asking of you? What is God expecting of you? Today's first reading, we hear about Paul speaking about God's expectation towards his people. Those who have accepted Jesus, what kind of life they are expected to live? A life of love, a life of forgiveness, a life of acceptance, a life of good morals, virtues. Why? Because they believe in Christ the true Messiah. But dear friends, in our own lives too, in our relationship with God, we too can complain like the people of Israel. We too could say, I burnt my candles and I went for nine days novena. God, you did not answer my prayers. I fasted on every Friday, but yet my sickness is not being healed. I went to all pilgrimages. I went to Velankani, I went to Fatima, but my son is not yet healed. My husband is still suffering with cancer. I prayed for a promotion at my job, but I'm still struggling with my job. God, you don't seem to be working. Sometimes we hear stories about people leaving the church, leaving the Catholic church and joining somewhere else, or even leaving the faith itself totally. The difficulty is, so often we try to fit God into a box of our expectations and we fail to believe or fail to understand that faith is not about fitting God into our box of expectation, but it is we trying to fit in God's expectations. Let's not forget, we did not create God in our image and likeness. No, God created us in his own image and likeness. And it is in faith that we walk in the plan of God that we fulfill our Christian vocation. It's not we making God to dance according to our music or asking him to mourn when we play the dirges. It's rather understanding what God has planned for us. God surprises us as Jesus did to the people of Israel of his time. He was a totally a different kind of Messiah, a Messiah of love, a Messiah who would bring in peace and joy, not just here on earth, but for eternity. Today, my dear friends, as we come to the altar, let us ask ourselves, where is our faith? Is our faith that shallow that it can, get, it can, sh it can be shattered or it can, it can just disappear when we don't get what we ask for? But rather, is our faith mature enough, strong enough to tell God, God, all that I want is your will to be fulfilled in my life. Tell me what's your plan. And I will strive to fulfill your expectations in my life and to live a good Christian life. Amen.